How to make a Stuart 5A crosshead lubricator. This is part one, making the oil tank. And to make the oil tank, I'm going to use a piece of one and a quarter inch square brass box section. And brass box section like this is available from Blackgates Engineering, which is where I bought this one from. I need to cut it on the bandsaw to a length of four inches, which is the length from front to back of the base of the 5A. I've made one of these before, but I'm making this in a different way and also it's going to be mounted directly to the engine. The other one was mounted on the baseboard next to the engine. I've speeded up the video process and now I have two pieces of brass box section. And it's the larger piece which is just over four inches long that's now been put into the chuck of my old Smart and Brown 1024 lathe. This is a great old machine and because it's a bit on the large side it's very good for holding pieces of metal of this sort of size and even bigger. What I'm doing is facing each end of the box section to make sure it's square. That's one side done, now I'm turning it round to do the other side. The squeaking you can hear is the belt, it's a bit slack, I need to fix this. It's looking increasingly like I'll be moving house very shortly, so when I move, I will need to build a new workshop. And when I build the workshop and re-equip it, I'll be making a video about it. You're currently watching me cleaning up the inside edge of the piece of box section using a small needle file. And now the piece of brass box section is ready to be soldered onto an end plate. In this clip I'm using the box section as a template to mark out the shape of the box section on a piece of 3mm brass sheet. And then it's over to the bandsaw to cut it out. In this clip it looks like my fingers are very close to the blade, but really they're not that close, I'm not entirely stupid. But it's time for a health and safety notice, when using a bandsaw it can be dangerous, keep your fingers away from the blade. One viewer commented, why do you keep giving health and safety notices? You know, I do get some stupid comments, they make me laugh most of the time, so why do I keep posting health and safety notices? Well, if I didn't, I'm sure some of these viewers who ask the stupid questions would go, Oh dear, I've just cut my finger off. I cannot carry on making my model. Anyway, I will continue to give health and safety notices warning of the possibilities of personal injury. Now it's silver soldering time. In this clip, I'm giving the piece of metal that I've just cut a good coating of silver solder flux around the outside edge. And this flux is called Easy Flow Number 2 and the piece of silver solder wire in my hand is called Silver Flow 55. Easy Flow number 2 silver solder was discontinued, and I think this was due to its cadmium content. What I'm going to do in this clip is do it wrong. I'm going to use a blowtorch nozzle that is too small to get this part to the correct heat, so you'll see what happens. This is the nozzle that I would normally use for silver soldering copper piping. And although it melts the flux on the silver solder wire, it's not really making much of an impression on the main part of the brass. I'll try it from underneath. Well, this is a little bit better. At least the flux is melting. But I don't think there's going to be sufficient heat from this blowtorch head to get the part hot enough. At least not in my lifetime anyway. If I applied the heat from this blowtorch for long enough, I'm sure the part would get hot enough in the end but it's going to take too long. If you're wondering why the piece of silver solder wire is in the picture most of the time, well, there's no specific reason, I just have it in my other hand, and I'm getting ready to just dab it on the work when I think it's going to get hot enough to melt it. After quite a long time, the flux is starting to take on, well, I wouldn't say a watery appearance, but at least it's starting to melt. So I'm going to just dab the silver solder onto the part and see what happens. And as you can see, it just forms into sort of a blob. But as this part is now really just about hot enough, the silver solder is starting to fill the gap. But it's not flashing around the joint like I need it to do. Here, for instance, it remains as a blob on top of the work. And if I continue heating it, the blob collapses and attempts to flash around the work, but this is not hot enough. The part that I'm trying to silver solder, the tank body and the end, isn't hot enough, but the old piece of stainless steel fire grate, upon which the piece of brass is positioned, 
is getting to the right temperature. But there's not much danger of soldering the brass to the fire grate because this fire grate is not clean, it's very oxidised and very dirty, which is the way you need it to be. Right, so that's enough messing about with the wrong blowtorch head, so I've fitted a larger one and as you can see now, the flame is far more intense. You do have to be careful because this blowtorch is very capable of melting the brass if I get it too hot, so I'm keeping my eye on this at all times. As an indication of the heat of this blowtorch head, when I put the silver solder wire even near to it, it melts. I'm working in the outer part of my workshop, which is right next to a wide open garage door, and it's getting very warm in here. So that's the front part soldered, now to move back around the side, and this is still not hot enough, but just watch, as soon as I put the blowtorch in the correct position, it gets very hot very quickly. Did you see it flash into the joint? That's two sides done. Now I'm going to move the position of the blowtorch to silver solder the other side. Same principle, heat it up to the correct temperature and apply the silver solder when it's hot enough. Silver soldering the rear part of this piece of brass is going to be difficult. I don't want to move it and disturb the joint. But when the blowtorch is around the back of it, then it's pointing at me and I'm now getting very hot. I think my jacket's about to burst into flames. Maybe I should have the camera on myself, whilst I spontaneously combust. But no, I've decided that it's more sensible to apply the heat from this side. I've applied some silver solder around the back, but by heating the part from this side, the silver solder that I've applied ran into the joint with no problem. The next stage of the job is to let this part cool, and then quench it in water. Followed by cleaning it up on my belt sander. This also makes the part very hot, so I frequently quenched it in water. I've speeded up this sequence because it did take quite a while. It's very important to control the position and the pressure of the piece of brass on the sanding belt. I'm really wanting to clean up the end that I've silver soldered. The rest of the part is quite clean, so I don't want to remove too much of that. When the brass part disappears from the sanding belt, that's because I'm quenching it in water because it's getting very hot and burning my fingers. It's also important not to forget the end bit. And one more time. That's it. Now it's time to clean up the surface with some Scotch-Brite just to smooth out the scratches left by the belt sander. Later on I'll be polishing this up and doing a bit more work on the surface, but this will be okay for the moment. When I look down the end of the box section, you can see how much silver solder has flowed into a fillet around the joint. This is a very strong joint and it's never going to leak. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.